What's up everyone, it's the Wise Bubbler here, and today I'm gonna to go through how to loop through <coughs> Google Sheet items um, using browser flow and then doing an action on a separate page. And so in this example, we're gonna take these like events, of, you know, people interested in an event, um, which is test one, test two, test three to five, and we're gonna send them an email dynamically with their name on Gmail, like literally on the page. Um, we're gonna like type in, you automate typing in and sending emails to them. There are many ways to do this. My goal here is to show you how to use browser flow um, to automate things on the web. This is my first non-bubble tutorial, so hang with me. Um, if you're not familiar with browser flow, it's an RPA system, um, browserflow.app, and you can automate tasks on your browser. So literally anything on your browser, and it doesn't it's not like using API connection, it's literally going onto your browser and act like a human kind of, you can see it in action, doing things like clicking, typing text, etc. So let's just see the final flow and how it's supposed to work. So I have this, you know, Google Sheet with all these entries and this could be uploaded CSV, it could be a form, could be whatever. And I have this flow um, and I am going to actually run this flow and let's see how it works. And then I will dive into the actual steps. So when I click running the flow, you can see it's actually like filling out and sending emails. And you can see that the emails are coming in to me on my email because I'm sending them all to myself. And we have dynamic name here and we have thank you for your interest. And we have a, oh, we, we put the location as the um, uh, payment link, but uh, we should, that should be fixed. But essentially you get the idea, um, I'm sending an email to people with dynamic data based on a Google Sheet and I'm literally doing it directly on the Gmail website. So let's jump in and see how this works. So if you don't know how to use browser flow, you need to click, um, you need to add it to Chrome, sign up, etc., And then you can click on this uh, icon to open up this editor that will open on the side. And so click it and it'll open up this editor and then you can create flows and those flows here have like steps to them and they essentially automate stuff on your browser. So let's go into how this actually works and the steps in the flow. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looping through spreadsheet rows and if you don't know how to do that you click the plus icon and then you click spread, well, I would click loop and you can loop spreadsheet rows and I just click that and then when you click that you need to actually like select a sheet um, and so going through that process, so as an example, well, I don't want, I do not want to do that. Um, you need to loop, I uh, don't want to loop pages, don't want to loop pages, um, loop spreadsheet rows, perfect. And then you select the sheet and then you connect it. Essentially, you just click on the sheet you want. Um, and when you click on the sheet, I clicked on events, um, it'll give you these uh, parameters or these the columns you have on your on your Google Sheet and actually I'm going to refresh this. I'm going to connect the sheet, wise bubbler, uh, select spreadsheet, um, oh, take a minute, events, and I'm going to tick sheet events. Perfect. This is what I wanted. Um, and then you can see that there are um, these columns on my Google Sheet and each one of them has a variable. So I can dynamically, as it's looping through the sheet, I can reference the name of this iteration. So for iteration one, it would be test one, for iteration two, it would be test two, and I can reference them throughout my, uh, the rest of my workflow um, so I can dynamically change the name, etc. cetera. Um, so then I'm clicking Compose, um, which is this button here. Now, to click Compose, um, you can either click Record, um, and then I can click here, and you can see that that appears. And if I click stop, you can see that there was like a click action and a selector. Now, in many cases, the selector that browser flow automatically chooses is not going to be the correct one. Um, that's because they're auto choosing it. And so what you need to do sometimes is click on select and actually go in and click on it. And you can see that it's still choosing that. And so the best way I found to actually get the correct selector is you click inspect here. And then let's make this a lot larger. Okay, um, it's pretty small, but if you click this edit icon here, select, it'll show you the correct selector. And so if I hover, if I hover over it, I can see that. Well, 
I can see that there's a div on top of this and you just need to know a little bit of HTML um, if you want to. You can skip this. If not, um, at the end of this video, I will share a link to how to actually do this if you want. But I actually just chose one of the selectors here, one of the classes, and I pasted it into, into the box here. And then you test it because a lot of times these won't work automatically um, from browser flow. And so if I exit out of here, since I already have it, I don't want to go back. Um, oh, there we go. Um, I can see I have that selector that I found there and I just put it in as a dot. I usually choose the class and if you put dot and then the class you chose, um, that should do it. Um, the next thing I'm doing is I'm clicking on a text area and that text area is this area. So if I did kind of select and on this text area, Sometimes again, it's a little finicky. You may need to try it one or two times, but the best way is you can record yourself and see what it selects. And you can see that stop recording, it shows recipients and it shows a bunch of different selectors. And sometimes those work and sometimes those don't. And sometimes you need to go to the inspector and actually find the correct selector. But it is very worth it um, as you saw in that automation on how fast and great it was. Um, that is clicking on this text. And then you can add an action to type text, but instead of typing like new text, I'm typing in the email that we have from this variable up here. And so it's typing that email. And the same thing here is I am I clicked to select the subject area um, instead of the text area. So I literally recorded myself clicking the subject area and you can see subject appears and that's what I did. And then you can actually add type text and you can actually record them together. Again, it's a little finicky, but it works most of the time. Type text and you can put test. And then when you stop, you can see that oh, subject and test was clicked and type text. And so in the subject was clicked and then the type text, this would be the, if you put the dollar sign here, you can put in event. And event in our case is just like the title we want. Um, so that's how I actually built out that click and then type text. And let's go back. And since it's already pre-built, that's why I'm doing it and deleting it. Um, and here, event sign up. And I should probably type text, get rid of sign up. And then the last thing is a message body. Again, same exact thing. I just recorded myself kind of clicking it and then checked if it works um, and type text and the message body, um, I type text. But here I actually wrote down the whole message I want to send. I said, hey, name, um, the location is um, hashtag location. Please select on the link below to complete your payment URL. Thanks again. We look forward to seeing you there. Um, and so I can put dynamic data within this uh, sheet, within this message. And that's the ultimate email. And the last thing I did was I recorded myself kind of clicking this button. So I literally went in and recorded myself clicking send. Um, and you can see here that they recorded it separately when I did it last time because you can see the selector is different. You just need to find the selector that works. And that's where browser flow gets a little finicky and probably where a lot of people um, drop off. But if you know how to find the correct selector, you can do that. And then if we go to it again, we can see that, again, really cool what's going on. Oh, I think we still. OK, yeah, so you need to make sure that all the emails are closed to actually run it and click play. And you can see that just how cool and how fast it's actually working. Um, and that's just really cool tool to use and learn how to use. It's just if you know how to find just HTML selectors, you can definitely use this for literally anything. You can automate stuff on your bubble app. And that's stuff I've done. I can't really share right now um, how, what we've done in terms of what I've done in terms of automating stuff on my bubble app um, and automate anything. You can do web scraping. You can put stuff in. Uh, in a Google Sheet, et cetera, like the sky is the limit. Uh, last note for anyone who is actually interested in learning how to build this, um, you can actually create that payment link. So the emails I got have a payment link here and that payment link, you can actually get paid. So it's like an event um, email where you're collecting payment. And what you can do is go to more, you can create a Stripe account. If you're not familiar with Stripe, just go to stripe.com, create an account. 
click more and click payment links and then you can just create a new payment link and add new product and I'll just uh, simplify this. Um, and you can add product and then you can click next and you don't want to split account, create link and then you can copy that link and put it in your Google Sheet and that's what I did and it'll look the same. And that's how you can collect payments for something like this. So hopefully this was helpful. <clears throat> I know it's a bit confusing, uh, this app, but I just wanted to dive in and experiment uh, trying to teach a different type of tool. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm pretty good at doing browser flow automations. And the last thing is I will attach a link to this automation. So you can actually copy this. I'm going to share it. Um, and you can get a link to this automation and add it directly to your browser flow um, your account. And so there's a link below where you can buy access to it and actually use it, test it out and look deeper into how it was created. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for my next videos.